Welcome, everyone, to the Polarian series of webinars. Today's presentation, Improve Your Development of Products and Software with an ALM-PLM Integration. I would like to introduce today's presenter, Stefano Rizzo, who is the Senior Vice President of Strategy and Business Development with Polarian Software. Stefano has over 20 years of experience in the application lifecycle management arena. Since 2010, he's responsible for the strategic development of Polarian Software, serving as our official spokesperson and visionary leader. Welcome, Stefano. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you very much. Good morning and good evening. This webinar is actually the third of a series about ALM and PLM integration, ALM and PLM convergence. Before going into the main argument today, let me make a short introduction to our company for those that are not yet familiar with Polarion. Our company has been founded in 2004 and uh, we released our technology February the 1st, 2005 for the first release. Privately held company that recently signed the first venture capitalist. We had the, the first venture capitalist signing in the company, which is a Siemens venture capital. This was actually the first uh, money that we got out of the market. Our company has a pure product focus. We released to the market an ALM platform, one single platform to manage all the ALM vertical practices from requirements, to test, to issue, change, audits and metrics, resource management, build and release, and variance management in one single place. We also deliver a couple of uh, subsets of these uh, functionalities into products that are called Polar Requirements and Polar QA. Main highlights in our platform is that since uh, day one, it's 100% based over the uh, internet technology, so browser-based, as a flexible architecture, it provides full trustability of through all the items uh, that are typical in the software development environment. Provides real-time status of the progress uh, of projects, uh, real-time status of uh, compliance to different specific uh, regulatory needs. And uh, as an intuitive design, since, since uh, day one, we've been investing a lot in improving the way people use our product. So we can show a total cost of ownership, which is the lowest in the market, when we come in looking into license cost, uh, deployment cost, configuration cost, and also how fast we are, uh, how fast our customers in adopting our technology. We benefit a lot from the open source community and as a lot of uh, open source components are part of our technology and this has always helped us in concentrating, uh, providing real value to our customers. We don't have to maintain old piece of code for version management, for example, or for uh, other things that uh, are already available out of the open source community. But on the other hand, We've been sponsoring the open source uh, community a lot. So actually, the official integration between Eclipse and Subversion is a Polarian product. This took us in uh, getting over 1 million users with 450 plus Fortune 1000 deployments. And uh, uh, we are rapidly reaching, I think that in these days, we've been trespassing the 200 extensions. Extensions are the ways in which Polarian can be at configured can be tailored for different needs and uh, including uh, integrations, including uh, templates, including uh, um, configurations for specific vertical market needs and the regulatory audits. Even more interesting is, is the number of users we have in our community. 10,000 10, community members means that we are a really live community of users that uh, are passionate with our technology and uh, share this passion with many other people and help us in improving daily. In 10 years, we, we reached a very broad global presence and we are directly present in the major market, both in Europe, US and Asia Pacific. And uh, we have a good number of uh, faithful partners that can serve our customers all around the world. 
as we would do that. Next steps, uh, as Nancy was uh, introducing before, after this presentation, you can visit, of course, uh, polarin.com, where you can find a lot of resources and pretty soon also uh, the recording of this webinar. You can download a free trial of our technology or you can try that online. You can request a proof of concept. Our professional services will be happy to understand your environment and provide you with a solution, tailored solution, tailored experience of using Polarium. Or you can watch demos by yourself. So that's all for the introduction. Now I will jump to the presentation today. As I said, this is the third step in, in our path to uh, ALM and PLM integration. As many of you are approaching this topic, and this topic is highly demanded in the market. There is more and more software into products and uh, hardware engineers, system engineers, need to cooperate more and more with software engineers. So the value of devices, the value of automobiles, for example, the value of uh, the perceived value of many of the, of the devices that we are selling in these days is uh, actually coming more and more from the software development. So the software development part inside the uh, product development is becoming more and more important. But Putting together the different uh, cultures in software development and in product development is a pretty big challenge. This challenge is completely reflected in the underlying technologies. So ALM systems, software development systems have been created and been uh, and evolved in the past uh, to fulfill software developer needs while product development tools uh, with uh, three, four decades of history uh, on their shoulders, they evolved in a, in a quite similar but many, in many aspects a different direction. To overcome the challenge of integrating LM and PLM is, uh, is this mountain that is represented here. To, to go on the mountain, you need, of course, a map. You need a compass, and, but the, at the end of the day, you need some bravery to reach your goal to the top. So let me guide you through this, uh, um, this path today. So when talking about the map, what, what do we have as a map to address this issue? We surely know that it's not an easy way. We know that there is a direction that we have to follow, and uh, we know that uh, we, it will be challenging for us. So. It will be challenging because of the landscape. The landscape uh, means that the ALM tools and PLM tools, ALM users and PLM users, as I said just before, have a different culture, have a different background, different uh, technologies. And we've been trying hard in the making software development, in supporting software development with PLM systems, for example, and sometimes also to adopt ALM tools to manage product life cycle, but we didn't succeed. So we, re we realized we as a community uh, of uh, uh, engineers creating technologies to support, creating tools to support uh, uh, software and product development, we felt this convergence. We felt that the two different uh, pieces must come together. But in this landscape, we, we see that there are different concepts, different uh, processes, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, different uh, approaches sometimes. But we have a, a strong motivation to uh, tackle this uh, uh, challenge. The motivation that uh, Michael Azov, uh, senior analyst at OVUM, gave us uh, in, the, in the past webinar of the series that uh, I encourage you to, to download and uh, to watch uh, uh, recorded uh, on our website. Just a, a small excerpt from there. We know that uh, putting ALM and PLM together, we will surely have the, some business benefits. Mainly, we will be able to have visibility across all the assets both software and product assets, and uh, we will improve for sure our searchability and the ability to locate information. Visibility, first benefit, the second benefit, we will be able to accurately link firmware with hardware. So we will be more ensured that we will have less errors, we will have uh, 
we will avoid damage costs and reputation risk. So we will be able from a piece of hardware to find out which is the, the firmware which is installed. And once we have a bug in the firmware, we will be able to know which are the hardware, the hard the devices in which this firmware is actually running. Traceability of assets for engineers in all life cycle phases. So putting the ALM and PLM together will reduce the time that we waste in finding pieces. And we will enable effective collaboration across globally distributed units. So it will be actually possible to navigate from product-related information to software-related information and vice versa. We will, at the end of the day, we will have better, a better support for the maintenance, for the repair, and for the operations. So we will quickly locate parts and manage the effect fixes, and we will reduce uh, inoperative time of broken products. This, are, this is a huge motivation, especially when, say, when looking at the market of recalls in the automotive, for example, of uh, defects uh, in uh, devices that are out in the market. So with this motivation, we also have some recommendations out of open. When making ALM and PLM integration, Michael Azov says, you need to manage software linked to the hardware that is better. And that, that's, that's the key rule. So creating a link and the touch points between software and product development, which means the disciplines that are common to the two environments, are requirements management, testing and QA, change and version, release management. So the integration will occur at two a two fundamental level, which is link and synchronize. And linking, live linking, we know, we've been told that it's challenging across the supply chain, but that exchange is necessary. And live linking is cheaper and easier to manage, but this will need a good process around that. So the recommendations are manage the links between software and hardware, be careful that these are the touch points and remember that there, these challenges will be in front of you. Data exchange and also the process management will be important. In this path, in this landscape, you have a guide today. That's me. I encourage you to follow me on Twitter and to, to drop me an email anytime during this presentation or after this presentation uh, if you have specific questions that we cannot address today. So once we know we have the map, we have also a compass that tells us which is the direction. And the direction that uh, Polarium recommends, the direction that is in the Polarium vision, talks about levels of integration. We in talking with many of our customers in the ALM plus PLM space, uh, in the system engineering space, uh, in the mechatronics industry, where more than 50% of our customers are today. So automotive, uh, aerospace, medical devices, uh, just to give you a, an example, uh, consumer electronics. Uh, these are the customers we've been talking with, and we realize that we can have different levels of integration between uh, ALM and PLM. And at the first level, so level from one to five, each level is built on top of the achievements of the previous level. So we start at level one and uh, with link and trace, then we move to the next level, adding uh, ability, adding features to our integration. And uh, this ability, this feature will support use cases that we will see later. So going quickly through the levels of integration that uh, we recommend and that we think that uh, should be followed when uh, putting ALM and PLM together. The basic level, the first level, which comes directly from a Microsoft recommendation is link and trace. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to understand and we need to put in place is to link product components to software components, which means product parts to software items that could be not just software code, not just binary code, executable code, 
but all the items that are in the uh, LAN space, so DTEX, for example, or test cases, um, or uh, requ software requirements, change requests. So having the ability to create links between the two worlds, so between the product lifecycle management tools and ALM tools is uh, the first thing that we need to do. Good question is which items? Should I link every item in product development with software development? Of course, the, the answer is no. We at Polarion, as other vendors of ALM and PLM systems, should provide the market, will provide the market. We are providing the market with the ability of creating those links. And which links exactly? It depends on the use cases that you want, you want to support. And we will talk about that in the next part of the presentation. So link and trace is the first level. Second level is change and propagate. So once we have the ability to link and trace, to connect items and to follow links, what we need to do is to be able to perform a change in the product and propagate the change to the software and vice versa. So this means that we need to be able, once we change an item in the PLM that could be CAD a drawing, it could be an electrical layout or a product specification, we need to be able to propagate this change to the linked items in ALM, which means the, the, lay, the electrical layout has been changing. Uh, so uh, maybe there are new, there is a new chipset uh, in, in, the, in the car, and we, uh, we know that we need to change, which is the, the, the software code that we need to uh, reinstall or to modify. Uh, these arrows are, are in one direction, but uh, uh, there should be uh, the, the, the change and propagate ability needs to be applicable also of the other way around, which means I change some uh, software code, for example, or uh, I fixed some uh, some code. Uh, so I made a change in the in the ELM environment. I'm able to find out to propagate the change in the product. So product engineers know that they they need to modify. Some, something in the product itself, or at least to test the behavior in the in the product uh, of of the of the changes uh, code. So second level change and propagate. Everything becomes orchestrated and becomes active once we reach level three of integration. At act at the act and communicate level, we have workflow integration we achieve the ability, we give our users, our customers, the ability to coordinate the workflows and the processes in product development and in software development, which means, for example, the ability of firing events from one workflow engine to the other. So, for example, having the a new state in an item in PLM, like uh, approved, for example, automatically all the linked items in in ALM, all the linked software items in the ALM, are turned into the approved state. There is a, a change in the status, a change in a workflow in an, in an assignee, for example, in a, at the product level. And this fires an action in in the in, in the software in, in the ALM workflow and vice versa. So once uh, all the bugs, uh, all the, the issues are turned into the fixed state, for example, in ALM, automatically there is status in the in the PLM workflow that changes into software software passed, for example, software tested. So this, uh, uh, of course you can start figuring out that once we achieve level three of integration, we can support a lot of different use cases. And we will talk about that a bit later. The first level, which is a, a bit more challenging, talks about uh, alignment. Why this is challenging? Because we get into the space of configurations, of different configurations. We get into the space of variants, which means that uh, 
everything that we've been saying so far, so the ability to link and trace, the ability to change and propagate, and to act and communicate, is available for specific product and software variants. So when you link an item from ALM to PLM is not a generic item, but is a specific item in ALM to a specific item in PLM and vice versa. So you see in this picture, for example, that we have three very similar variants of the car and we have some software code in the ALM space. So we have items in the PLM space below, which are linked to items in the ALM space above. And what happens is that for one specific uh, product variant, for one specific product configuration, anything we do, so we change the status, for example, is applied to the specific code variant in the ALM space and vice versa. We find a bug in a, in a code variant in, a, in the LM space, for example, we are able to find out which product configurations are affected by this, uh, this defect. So that's level four. At level five, which is what uh, I would like to define the Nirvana, is uh, the collaborate and report level. So all the engineers, both software and product engineers, can access to a platform that is uh, so integrated that they can collaborate in real time in making the product together. They can, software engineers and product engineers, are making the product in real time with four hands, and we have a live reporting of all the ongoing engineering activities, both in the software space and in the product development space. So this is, of course, what we need to look for in the, in the medium term is uh, very challenging, especially in, the, in the big uh, enterprises, but it's the direction in which we are going. So this means that uh, with this level of integration, we as ALM and PLM vendors will be able to support our customers with the, with the ability, with a platform that uh, let them create innovation all together, both in product and in software at the same time. So that's our compass, but we need some bravery to, to go to the top, we need to, to use all our experience and uh, to, to be also uh, brave uh, to, get, to go to the top. And what we need to do is uh, to, be, to accept the challenge, to be aware of our limits, and so going through a use case driven integration. I mean, when ALM and PLM vendors more and more are providing the market with the ability of creating links, of propagating the change, of orchestrating the workflow, and, and so on, as, as I described in the levels of integration before, but we needed to understand, I would say, quite case by case, or industry by industry, if not customer by customer, we need to understand which are the use cases that we need to support, which are the use cases in which we, from which we will have a, the major benefit. And on top of these use cases, we need to decide which level of integration we want to achieve. In this graph that I will use now, it contains our own experience in the number of supported use cases at every different level of integration. So starting from level one, uh, link and trace, we, uh, in our experience, we see that uh, we don't support so many use cases with a link and trace integration, but we already support some. We most of the time support some use cases that may, maybe they are not a lot, but they are very strategic in the context of our customers. So few use cases are already supported with link and trace, and these are some examples of the use cases that uh, we support with this ability. So with the, the simple ability of putting a link between a PLM item to an ALM item and vice versa, we are able, for example, to link a product test case to a software test case, 
we are able to find all the software test cases that are connected to a product test case. We are also able, for example, to link a product defect to a software defect. And we are able to find the product component impacted by a software defect, for example. So just by linking and just by being able to navigate from a product uh, component to a software component, we have a bunch of uh, use cases that uh, we support. And some of them are really important. If we move to the next level, so if the at the integration level number two, which means that uh, uh, on top of link and trace, we are also able to, to make changes and propagate the change. We support some more use cases. We are already around 25% of the possible use cases to be supported. And uh, some of the use cases that uh, are supported, these are just examples, of course. We can change a product test case and we can propagate the change to the software test cases. So any product test case change, we immediately notify to the owners of the test cases that the change has been happening and we can propagate the change to, to software test cases. Or another example, we change the product requirement in the, in the PLM space. We have a, a big product requirement in, in, in the PLM space, which is, for example, the car must run 100 miles per hour, for example. And uh, we propagate the change to the impacted software user stories. So in this case, we suppose that uh, the, the software development team uh, using a giant methodology with ALM. So instead of requirements, they use a user story. And having a change in the product requirement, we propagate this change. Uh, we notify of this change uh, the impacted user stories or the owners of the user stories that they need to perform a change as well. We fix the bug in the software and we propagate the change, which is the other way around. We update the, the bill of material, the product bill of material. So once the bug is, uh, is fixed automatically, we have that uh, a change happens in the PLM space. So as I said, more or less 25% of the use cases are supported already at this level, but uh, uh, we are already reaching uh, a page that could be satisfactory for many installations of ALM and PLM. If we move to, to the level number three, in our experience, we have seen that uh, we jump to 70 plus percent of uh, the desirable use cases that are supported. So we, a level three that we remember is the uh, workflow orchestration ability. It's the ability to connect the two workflows in the ELM environment and the PLM environment. So when moving to this level, we, we go from 25% more or less of use, case, use cases supported to 70%, which, is, which has been so far satisfactory for quite all our users. So in the active uh, of, and communicate uh, level of integration, the use cases, just to give you an example that we support, are these. Change the status of a software change request in Analyze when a product change request gets into the evaluate state. So in the product environment, in the PLM environment, we have uh, a change request for the product. And we want to analyze the impact of this change request. So we put the, the product component that we want to change in the analyzed state and automatically all the software components that are con contained in this product part receive the analyze request. All the product owners of the software components, sorry, all the software uh, components owners in the software development space receive the request to analyze the impact of the change, to give it the value of the change, for example. And they can evaluate it and uh, send together the cost of performing such a change by means of a workflow uh, orchestration. So uh, the, the analysis uh, of the software component ends with a, uh, an estimate, a cost estimate, and the product owner is able to collect all the cost estimates and decide if it's the case to perform the change in the product or not. Um, another use case is uh, the ability to create automatically a product defect when a software bug is discovered. 
So we discovered in the ALM space uh, a bug in the software, and automatically the product, a product defect is created in the ALM space. Going into orchestration of people, we are able to assign, for example, a test run task. So the task to perform a test run, the software tester, when there is a new product round, a new test round in the product. So there is a new test round in the product development and automatically all the software testing tasks are assigned to software testers. This level of integration is definitely achievable with, uh, uh, with Polaris software and uh, most, of the, the, most of the popular PLM environments in the market today. At level number four, so we are reaching the top, we add some more use cases. And just to remember, the align and the unify level is when we uh, add the configuration, the alignment of configuration, the alignment of the variants in, uh, at software and product level. And we are close to 90% of the possible use cases that uh, we are aware of uh, that are supported. And some of these are, for example, we are able to find out the software source code that is running on a specific product version or variant. So we have uh, the car XYZ and uh, in the version uh, W and uh, in the variant, uh, I don't know. We are able to know exactly at, at that point of time in that, ver in that variant, uh, in that product variant, which source code is running, which code is uh, uh, is installed there. Not only binary code, but also source code that generates that binary. We are able, for example, to find out uh, all the software variants that can be installed on a product, on a product variant. So we have a, a product variant, and we can find out all the software variants that can be installed there to perform different uh, uh, behaviors, for example. And we are able to navigate the full bill of material with product and software artifacts in the context of a product configuration without leaving the PLM environment. So uh, this is a pretty interesting use case. Uh, we have customers asking us uh, to be able to perform some features that include information from uh, ALM, for example, in PLM, and vice versa. So that uh, uh, product engineers don't need to, to, to log out uh, from the PLM and log in into the ALM environment, but are able to navigate uh, with a kind of a delegated UI or in place inside their PLM, navigate to information that are uh, managed and contained in the ALM environment and vice versa. So this means that uh, with this alignment and this unification, we are able to navigate the full bill of material in the context of one specific uh, product variant down to the software component. So of course, at level five, we think that uh, all the use cases are supported and the use cases at this level that are at are more management and collaboration use cases like the ability to define and monitor inside product and software KPIs, K KPIs which means key performance indicators uh, that include uh, our product development ability and software development ability in one single place. We are able to co-engineer a product, which means that uh, product and software engineers cooperate at the same table, in the same environment in making a product. We are able to implement and measure product and software process improvements. So we are able to modify the way in which we create a product, including the software processing. So product and software process processes can be adopted, can be improved on top of, uh, of uh, um, new needs of the company. So innovation can actually happen fast also as the uh, ability of working together. We can change the workflows, the way in which people work in one single unified uh, environment. And this, uh, just to visualize that, so you can imagine for those that are familiar with agile methodologies, that the software and our engineers will be part of the same scrum team, will be part of the same agile team, team which means that they meet together, they divide the, uh, their tasks in the stand-up meetings, for example, they make uh, progress meetings all together using one unified platform, which is uh, 
successfully the fusion of all the ALM and PLM disciplines. We think that this is the goal, the final goal of the integration of ALM and PLM. And I hope that this presentation was helpful for you to understand better, which is the approach and what you can expect from ALM and PLM integration. We at Polarion Software, we are thanking you for your time today, but we also encourage you to ping our company, to check out our company, and to make some, let's say, climbing up to the mountain together of integrating your ALM and PLM environment. Of course, ALM must be Polarion, which is the as far as we know, the the best in, integrated ALM platform to survive this challenge. Thank so, you, Stefan. I do have some questions here that, that I that I can share with you now and thank you for sharing that presentation and your journey. The the first question that has come in speaks to the integration. Can we expect the integration of ALM and PLM to be available in a plug and play concept? Hmm. We can expect that, yes. <laughs> when this expectation will be fulfilled. So if the question is to be able to have a kind of integration from a, an ALM environment from Polarion with a PLM environment out of the box. So uh, I just open the Polarion tool and the integration is there. With my PLM supporting uh, all the levels of integration and uh, ready to support my use cases. The answer is that we can expect that, yes, but it's not tomorrow. I mean, we can expect uh, to be able to physically integrate the system. So to have a link and traceability, to have a change and propagatability, but uh, the orchestration of, of, of workflows, for example, uh, is really specific to uh, different companies. So we as vendor, we can provide the underlying technology to make this integration happen, to make this orchestration happen, but we will need to tune that uh, over the specific uh, workflows that are uh, specific in, in different companies and in different market verticals. So I think that at the end of the day, really plug and play, it won't happen. It will be more and more easy. It will be more and more supported by experience and tools, but will always require tuning and improvement on um, in specific battlefields. Okay, thank you for that. The next question that has come in is, what is the advantage of choosing Polarian as the companion for my existing PLM versus someone else? There, there are many, many advantages. Looking at Polarion versus the competition, I think that there are more than 30 companies in the market that claim to have ALM. The two key differentiators that Polarion has uh, against uh, the competition are the, the fact that it's a unified platform. So it's one single product managing all the software development artifacts, all the ALM disciplines supported by one single unified and open platform. Uh, this means that when coming to integrating Polar with anything else, so this question comes from PLM, but uh, could come from any other space, can come from the DevOps, it can come uh, from uh, uh, integrating uh, w into a business intelligence environment. Uh, whatever it is, Polarion has the unique ability that uh, you have only one piece of code to integrate. So compared to uh, many of our competitors that have dispersed uh, tools that have uh, islands of automation, that they are still struggling in integrating these pieces together, so the challenge to overcome the integration with a, a, another technology that probably is not uh, uh, their technology, is a third-party vendor technology, and uh, instead of one single integration, they have to create 20 or 30. I mean, if, to achieve requirements, uh, uh, integration means uh, integrating a PLM with a requirements uh, management tool. 
uh, achieving the link, uh, link and traceability uh, in testing means uh, integrating PLM environment uh, with another testing tool. So the first advantage is uh, the unified platform uh, that uh, is uh, exclusively uh, available from Polarium. Uh, the second advantage is that in, out of this unified platform, when we reach level three and four in the integration, so uh, process orchestration and unification, we are able to describe a unique workflow that governs all the ALM artifacts. As a modern PLM system, have one single um, workflow mechanism that manages all the uh, product development uh, artifacts like cycle, we can easily achieve level three because we have only two workflow engines to connect. Some of the tools of the competition even don't have workflow uh, management uh, on top of the requirements uh, tool, for example. At level four, it, it, it's even more critical because uh, in PLM, the concept of variance and the concept of configuration is essential inside uh, the PLM database. It's available out of Polarion itself because of its unification. So you have variance both in uh, requirements variants, you have test case variants, you have software code variants, everything manageable, manageable in Polarion. Other competitors, they don't have this. Most of them, they even don't have this concept. And if they have it, they have it for software configuration, but not, for example, for requirements variants. So I would say that uh, it's possible uh, to integrate your PLM environment with another ALM platform and achieve maybe easily level one, link and trace, but you have to make a lot of integration. You can sometimes achieve level two, but you have no chance to reach level three and four. Okay, thanks, okay. Stefan. Staying on the, the, uh, the PLM side of it, what PLM tools will you be integrating with? The fact that uh, we had uh, this investment from uh, Siemens, uh, Siemens VC, of course, created uh, in the market uh, uh, a lot of noise, uh, and uh, the market is expecting something to come with Team Center, which is the Siemens PLM platform. Actually, we uh, I cannot disclose too much about that, but uh, it's pretty straightforward to understand that uh, we will not waste uh, time in this direction. Uh, but we also have uh, experience uh, with other platforms. Uh, I mean, the fact that we have this investment doesn't mean that we will not integrate with other platforms like uh, uh, PDC or Dassault. That's uh, uh, by chance and by customers, and we already have a request in doing that. And we already have uh, some experience in doing that. And uh, we for sure will be able to fulfill these needs as well. I'm just, just citing this important uh, uh, PLM uh, vendor. But there are many other PLM uh, tools that we already integrate. Uh, um, just just to give an example, we, we have a very strong integration with uh, MacWorks uh, uh, tools that are pretty, are very popular in, in the product and software and system development in general. Okay, we have time for this one last question, Stefan. What is the difference? between the Polarian approach versus the OSLC approach? OSLC is, a, is an interesting effort that actually comes from the need of integration, integrating islands of automation in the ALM space. So this initiative was started by vendors that have disparate tools to support ALM, and this is the result of uh, the integration strategy in the LM world. But it's, uh, it's clearly useful also to integrate uh, with PLM, external PLM tools. The point is that uh, the OSLC approach, which is a kind of come, derives from the linked data approach, so data linking, is uh, helpful at the data level of the integration, which means uh, will probably support uh, uh, link and trace uh, levels, will probably support the change and propagate level, but uh, there is no nothing, nothing active in the OSLC approach. It's just a data integration. So 
uh, when coming to the need of orchestrating the two different workflows, the product workflow and software workflow, OSLC will not support that, is not supporting that. And when coming even better to the next level, as far as I know, OSLC still doesn't have the concept of configuration and variance. So the ability of performing a traversal of a specific configuration is not supported by the OSLC approach. So at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, let's say it's good. It's a data integration with support uh, uh, in our expectation, in our experience, uh, as it said, uh, level two integrations, which means uh, 25% of use cases. Thank you, Stefano. That concludes our presentation for today. In addition, you will receive an audio recording of today's presentation, and we hope you'll share it with your colleagues. And remember to subscribe to the Polarian blog and to look for us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I thank you, Stefano, and all of our attendees for sharing your time with us today. Thank you.